Did you know that over a 30 year consistent investing with mutual funds, you can end up paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in fees alone? Crazy, right? I know. Hello everyone, Alex is here. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe as always. And today's video is gonna be actually a pretty crazy one. It is an eye opener for some people and well, at least it was for me. And I think if you watch till the end, your mind will explode and you will realize how crazy this world is and how you can use all this knowledge for you, for your portfolio, for your friends, for your parents, for your grandparents, for your kids, anyone else. This is crazy. We're gonna be building a super easy three ETF portfolio today, which you can use for your entire investment profile. That's it, it's super convenient, it's easy to use, consistent performance, low fees, everything else. And why it is important? Because if you compare a mutual fund where the average expense ratio is actually at 2.3% versus an ETF where the average expense ratio is around 0.2%, which is also on the higher end, they can go all the way down to 0.03%, which is crazy low. And if you compare these two, I'm gonna do all the financial nerd math here so you don't have to. For example, let's compare two portfolios of the same amount of $100,000, right? So the first one is actually gonna be investing into ETFs, all of it, and the other one is gonna be investing into mutual funds, all of it. An ETF portfolio has an expense ratio of 0.06%, and a mutual fund portfolio is gonna have a fee of 2%, which is actually below the average amount, but we also went on the lower side for ETF as well. So looking at these two portfolios, after the first year, you're gonna be paying $60 in fees for your ETF portfolio, and you're gonna be paying $2,000 for your mutual fund portfolio. This is crazy. And that's only for a first year without any other extra contribution on top of that. Now let's compare a smaller portfolio they're gonna be having for a longer term, say like 30 years, right? And you're gonna be adding a consistent contributions say for example five thousand dollars per year and on average return for, from this portfolio around six percent year over year and again on one side we have an etf only portfolio with a 0.06 percent expense ratio and then on the other side we have a mutual fund only portfolio with a two percent fee and now over the 30 year period you're going to be paying around five thousand and hundred dollars fees for your etf portfolio and if you say you went with the mutual funds, you're gonna be paying $139,800 for your mutual fund portfolio. What is this? So the difference between these two is $134,000, $130,000. This is crazy. You can put a down payment for a pretty good house with this money. How is this even legal? That's insane. So why you wanna pay all these fees? for mutual funds if you can go with ETFs. Let's see what three ETFs we have today and how you can use this for your entire portfolio or for someone else's portfolio, whatever, and don't pay these huge fees on top of that. And it's definitely not easy to choose which three ETFs you wanna use because in Canada, for example, there are 890 ETFs on a stock market. That's crazy. And this number actually grew from 780 to 890 just over last year. So it's a 15% growth just in the number of ETFs you have on a stock market. How you can decide which one to buy and which one to add to your three ETF portfolio? Tell me that, I know. But an important metric from all this growth of number of ETFs that were added to the Canadian stock market is that these investment vehicles are becoming more and more popular. Because investing is certainly not an easy thing to do. And especially if you into individual stocks, you need to know when to buy the stocks, what stocks to buy, when to sell the stocks. Or if you're a dividend investor, you need to find out which stocks pay dividends, how much the dividends they're paying, if they're gonna be increasing their dividends or they're gonna be dropping their dividends, how these stocks perform during the market crashes and all that. So if you don't wanna worry about any of those, you can use ETFs for your entire portfolio. So out of all the 890 ETFs on the Canadian stock market, I'm gonna stick with the top three providers in Canada, which is the BlackRock, BMO, 
and Vanguard. I'm also going to remove all the managed ETFs and all the ETFs that track specific sector, say like finance or industrial or whatever. And instead, I'm going to be looking at ETFs that follows a broader index, say like S&P 500 or the all market cap, say the, the whole US market or some international index. So we have diversification outside of US and Canada as well. So for a portfolio we're going to be building today is more directed into the growth portfolios. So we're going to be looking at the 10 plus year of investing time that you have ahead of you. And what that means that our allocation into equity versus fixed income is going to be 80 to 20%, which means that 80% of our ETF should be allocated to equity and 20% to fixed income. And there is a representation of that allocation in all in one ETF as well. For example, there's an iShares all-in-one growth ETF portfolio, which is XGRO, and that has an allocation of 80% to equity and 20% to fixed income. These types of portfolios are not requiring any sort of rebalancing. They're going to be doing that for you, but they also have a little higher fee, 0.21%, still on the lower side if you compare it to the mutual funds, of course, but it's on the higher side. If you compare it to the three ETF portfolio, I'm going to be talking in a bit. We're going to be building a very small portfolio of $10,000 so we can cover a larger audience and everyone else who is interested in investing into ETFs and build an ETF only portfolio can start with it. You can certainly do it with a larger sum or a lower sum, whatever works for you. But for the sake of the easy math and easy calculations, we're going to stick with a $10,000 portfolio today. The first ETF we're going to be adding to our portfolio is going to have the biggest allocation of 55% and it's going to be XAW, which is the iShare score all country world except Canada index ETF. What it means is that this ETF covers the entire world except Canada. And what it means is that we have diversification outside of Canada right from the start, right? And the larger allocation this ETF has is in the US, around 50%. The management expense ratio for this ETF is at 0.22%. So it's on the higher end if you compare with some other ETFs, but still very good for our use case. The second ETF we're gonna be adding to our portfolio is gonna have an allocation of 25%, still a pretty good chunk, right? And it's gonna be VCN, which is the Vanguard FTSE Canada All Cap Index ETF. So this ETF covers the best and the largest companies on the Canadian stock market. And this is actually one of the lowest fees ETF on TSX. The management expense ratio is at 0.06%, which is great for us. We're not going to be paying a lot of fees for this one. And the final ETF for our portfolio is going to be VAB, which is the Vanguard Canadian Aggregate Bond Index ETF. And this one's going to have an allocation of 20%. This covers the fixed income portion of our portfolio. And this one has a mayor of 0.09%, which is also on the lower side. So our overall fee for our entire three ETF portfolio is 0.15%. And as you can see on this graph, if you invested $10,000 into portfolio like this, your fee is gonna be at $15.40, which is great. This is super low fee if you compare it to anything else out there. Right, And if you compare it to a single ETF growth portfolio, your first year fee is going to be not that different. For a single ETF, it's going to be $21 and for your portfolio, it's going to be $15, right? But over the long term period, if you keep contributing $5,000 a year with a 6% average annual growth, you will end up paying almost $20,000 for a single ETF solution and $13,000 for the three ETF portfolio or if your portfolio is going to be larger than that, say you have a portfolio of $200,000 for a single ETF solution, you're going to be paying $420 fee. But for your three ETF portfolio, your fee is going to be $308. And again, now for a long-term period, if you keep contributing $10,000 a year for this one, with a 6% average annual growth, you'll end up paying almost $100,000 for a single ETF portfolio and $70,000 for a three ETF portfolio. And here you can see a significant $30,000 difference in fees alone. And now the part that's gonna blow your mind. For the same setup, but with mutual funds and 2% fee, over the 30 year period, you will end up paying a crazy $745,000.
That's crazy, right? So it depends what you want to do and what your goals are and how you want to allocate your time. Do you want to manage? Do you want to rebalance your portfolio? Do you want to care what ETFs you buy? Do you want to spend time rebalancing? Or are you okay to pay a little more fees on top of that? So you only invest in this single ETF, right? And even though this ETF portfolio is super small, it's just three ETFs in there, right? You still need to make sure that you are rebalancing correctly. You are investing into right ETFs regularly and all that. So it's up to you if you pay a little more fees on top and only have a single ETF solution, or you're okay to invest a little more of your time into rebalancing and managing your portfolio on your own so that you pay less fees on top of that. Because these fees add up with time, right? And if you plan to invest for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, these fees add up. And a couple of final thoughts here. If you're a young investor, you just starting up and you don't have a lot of money to invest, say like five or $10,000, then you would probably be better off with the single ETF solutions. And with time, as you learn more about investing and what's going on there, you will explore more ETF solutions for stocks, if you want to do that, of course. And as your portfolio is going to be growing bigger and bigger, you can start managing by yourself and pick the lowest fees ETFs with the proper allocation. Because a single ETF solution is actually all you need to get started, right? You don't have to research or do anything else. You just pick a single ETF and buy into it. The earlier you start investing, the better and the faster you're gonna get to your goal. And you can use both Simple or Quest Trade to start investing with this. Both of these platforms don't require any fees if you buy in into ETFs. And you can find the links below in the description. You also get some bonus if you sign up with that link, wink, wink, and start contributing regularly to build up your investment profile and continue with your investment journey. With all that, thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell, and I'll see you around. Stay safe out there. Cheers, bye.